runs a child protection education program for young people in kindy up to year 10 and we've worked with around 60,000 students face to face in schools and just over 24,000 students on our life. Young, female, free. Hi, my name is Brianna. I'm 16 years old and I'd like to talk to you about something that is very important to me. that we just say for fun <laughs> um, and I, I think you know maybe sometimes they think oh they're doing youth work because they can't do anything else they don't they don't see it as that it's a real passion for people to get into that area we do it because we love it <laughs> it's wild to understand what youth work was you know we're playing lots of different games um, pool playstation things like that and I'm sort of wondering okay what's the purpose of all this how am I actually even working right now um, and then, you know, you start having those um, conversations and building relationships with young people and it's like, okay, that's why we do what we do. Hi, I'm Kate Munro. I'm the CEO of Youth Action and I want to welcome you to the 2020 Youth Work Awards. Um, I'd like to just first hand over to Arnie Ann Weldon, who's going to give us a welcome to country. Good afternoon, everyone. Firstly, I need to acknowledge that I am a Wiradjuri Koori Balan and I belong to the Clear River people of the mighty Wiradjuri Nation. I'm also a member of Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council and it is with their permission that I stand before you here this, after, this evening. In this particular part of Eora country, Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council is the cultural authority and custodian of culture, heritage, land and waterways. And I wish to acknowledge all Aboriginal and non-Aboriginal brothers and sisters that have gathered here this evening for this beautiful function. I acknowledge my respect for the Gadigal people, their culture and their identity, and I also acknowledge the spiritual ancestors of the Gadigal people, for they shall always remain within their land, our Mother Earth. But undeniably, history has certainly dealt my people unjust treatment, and sadly we witness and continue to be paralysed by these unfortunate injustices but we are a living testament to an ongoing history of strong commitment, determination, hardship and pride of our culture and the essence to go forward into the 21st century. And our practices of culture and language have been handed down to hundreds and hundreds of generations. And as I speak, I've certainly handed on to my children and my grandchildren. For I learnt my Wiradjuri culture and traditions by the teaching and by listening to my elders. And I call my elders the strong, clever ones. And we must always pay respect and honour our elders for they made many sacrifices to create 
a better future for all peoples in our country. And as a Wiradjuri Kuribalan, I would like you to celebrate, to be proud and to stand with us. For Metropolitan Local Aboriginal Land Council, we certainly promote a vision of working together as one community. And the boundaries for the Euro Nation country spans from the Hawkes River to the north, the Nepean to the west, and the Georges River to the south. So it is with the permission, and certainly with honour, that I welcome you to the land of the mighty Euro Nation and Gadigal people here at your function this evening. And I also would like to thank um, your organisation for inviting me to conduct the welcome. Um, it is certainly an honour um, and a privilege that has been, uh, you know, um, granted to me and I, I am very humble. Uh, so once again, welcome to the land of the mighty Eora Nation. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for that lovely, beautiful welcome, Arnie Ann. And I too would like to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands on which all of uh, all of us are coming from today. We're all over the state. Um, I'm here in the office on Gadigal land, so I'd like to pay my respects to elders past, present and emerging as well. Um, so I'm really honoured and privileged and excited to be able to be uh, introducing the start of uh, this year's Youth Week Awards. Um, Youth Work Awards, I'm so sorry, I've been trying not to say that. <laughs> to this year's Youth Work Awards. Um, one of the, the most exciting things I've had is, is to be able to call the winners and the, and the nominees and have conversations with people about, um, about the work that they've been doing and it's been a really, really tough year and we at Youth Action we know how, how challenging it's been and how much the sector and how much young people have risen to those challenges. So it's been really lovely to be able to give people good news about, um, you know, to affirm that the work that they've been doing and to acknowledge um, the successes and the triumphs that they've had. So I don't, uh, I don't take that job lightly. I don't underestimate the lift that that gave to people. Many people spoke about how important it's been to them to hear some good news this year. So I just want to reaffirm to everybody who's nominated, who's won, to all of you that are watching, that we we see the work that you do and we. We see the value in it every day and even on those tough days when you're struggling and having a moment where maybe you feel unsure about the impact that you're having, know that we see it and we value it and we celebrate it. So that's what we're here to do today. Um, so as you can see, we're doing things a bit differently. I'm really sorry that we're, we're not able to have you here with us. Um, thank you for joining us online. I think it's given us an interesting opportunity to bring a lot more people from all over the state into the awards, um, but it does make it a little bit of a weird experience talking into the barrel of a camera. Um, so one of the things that we've decided to do with our MCs today is to try and just to bring a bit of the humanness into the event. We've invited a number of different youth workers to come along and be MCs. So we've got them all locked up in a green room out the back and they are um, equally anxious as I am to be talking straight into a camera. So I think you'll really enjoy hearing from them. These are people who, their faces are familiar, you know them, the, the work that we do, the work that you do, the awards that have been presented are really important to these people. So I think it'll be lovely to hear what they say about the awards. Um, I would also like to thank everybody. We've got a mix of live and some pre-recorded material. So thank you to everybody who's pre-recorded. Again, we've asked a lot of youth workers to step up into a space outside their comfort zone and they've had to record things on Zoom. They've had to record things on their iPhones. So thank you so much to everybody who has um, yeah, stepped out of their comfort zone and into a technological space that's really scary for youth workers. Um, I would also like to, uh, I guess I, the other thing I would like to say is we've tried to make this as interactive as possible. So we have, um, we have a chat feature. There's going to be some questions in the chat feature. Please put your answers down, say hello to the people you know out there, introduce yourself to some new friends. We'd like to try and make this as interactive as we can. Um, we'd also love you to put any, uh, you know, congratulations, anything you want to say to the winners, please put that in the chat as well. We've got live captioning happening so that for anybody who wants to um, follow visually, there, there will be captions happening throughout the, um, the recording as well. Um, lastly, I would like to thank our official event sponsors, so Department of Communities and Justice and Training Services New South Wales, as well as all of our other event supporters. It's been really fantastic to, um, 
to have people come on board in, on a year that's again it's 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 challenging it's financially tough for people so we really appreciate the support that we've had from from all of the organizations who've come on board and who are presenting awards for us today now what I would like to do is hand over to, I'm going to introduce our chair, Tamika Worrell. Um, unfortunately, she couldn't be here with us today. She is out there in cyberspace, so hi Tamika. I can feel your presence. I, um, you're a wonderful chair for Youth Action. You're a wonderful role model. Tamika is going to give us a short uh, welcome video. And then we've also got uh, three very special MP videos. So one from Minister Ward, one from Minister Taylor, and one from Penny Sharp and MLC. So again, I'm really, really appreciative of those MPs taking their time to to record some messages especially for the sector as well so thank you very much sit back enjoy and um, yeah I'm gonna hand over to Tamika hi everyone Tamika Laurel here the chairperson of youth action coming to you from beautiful Dome country in Western Sydney I'm sorry I can't be with you live to celebrate tonight I'm so incredibly impressed by the resilience and innovation that the youth sector has shown during this challenging year. I want to wish a massive congratulations to all the nominees and winners tonight. And believe me from the bottom of my heart, you're all incredibly deserving. I hope you all have an amazing night and that you continue to celebrate each other's successes whenever you can. All the best. G'day everybody, Gareth Ward here. A huge shout out to everyone that's been nominated as part of this year's Youth Action Youth Sector Awards. It's been a really tough year. We've faced drought, bushfires, floods and COVID-19. But more than ever before, it's incredibly important we focused on the most valuable asset that we have and that is our young people. All of you are doing tremendous work. I just want to commend each and every one of you for working hard, for firing up and making sure that young people are cared for during this important time. A big shout out to Kate Munro, who's the new CEO of uh, Youth Action, and I know you're doing a great job. I'm really appreciative of your efforts and your entire team. Well done. Hi, I think 2020, we just want it really get in the bin. Thank you so much to the youth sector this year. I know you've had to deal with so many different things, whether it's bushfire, drought, flood, and COVID. You've done amazing things for young people all across the state, and I just want to say thank you very much. May 2021 be a much better year for us all. Hi, welcome everyone. How fantastic to be at the Youth Awards for 2020. What a year. <laughs> Challenges and opportunities for everyone. But thank you so much for gathering here today and for acknowledging people in your area that are just doing the most incredible job. I'm Bronnie Taylor. I'm the Minister for Regional Youth. Our first ever time the portfolio is sat in the New South Wales Government and it's been the most fantastic year ahead. But what I really wanted to say to each and every one of you is a very big heartfelt thank you for everything that you do for young people in New South Wales. I am in awe of the work that goes on. I'm in awe of the support that you provide. I'm in awe of the mentoring and, and just the being there for young people that you do. When I'm on the ground, all that I hear are the incredible work that our youth services are doing out there. It's not easy work, it's tough work, it's rewarding work and you're doing a really terrific job. Going past the pandemic, we know that young people are going to be one of the most affected demographics in terms of COVID recovery. So I'll be relying on all of you to be giving me the feedback about what we need to do, what more things we need to do, what's working, what's not. But today is all about celebrating the incredible work that you do. So have a great time, enjoy. Congratulations to all of the winners and a huge congratulations to all of the finalists. Just being here and being involved speaks volumes about who you are. So thanks for having me. Have a terrific time and I can't wait to catch up with you all on the ground really soon. See you then. Hi, I'm Sam Kettlewell and I'm going to be introducing the award for Outstanding Data and Evaluation. Data and evaluation not only emphasises what we do as youth workers, but it provides us with the frameworks to measure it. It creates that dialogue so that we can recognise and understand what it is that we do and our impacts. Process and data evaluation it informs our practice, increases productivity and is in transforming what we do as youth workers. We're required, required to tell a story as youth workers uh, about our practice, our strengths and how we're responsive in our actions. And data provides that evidence. It provides a commentary to our effectiveness, our relevance and our impacts. It can be either quantitative or qualitative. Now that's a story or numbers. Now we in the sector, we're good at relaying stories. We do it every day. We build rapport, we connect. We're just not that great at collecting that hard data, 
But in order for us to continue to create opportunities for young people, we must collect those data and those numbers. The importance of capacity to record, review and share our data and all of our evidence will just strengthen and improve youth work practices, creating more opportunities for young people while cementing youth work as a professional industry that is both valued and understood within our communities. Next up, I'd like to introduce CEO of FAMS, Julie. Hi everyone, I'm Julie Hurrigan Reese, the CEO of FAMS. We're excited to present and sponsor this award, which recognises a service or project using innovative data collection as part of their program design and evaluation strategy, and which paints a compelling picture of the impact on clients during the use of outcomes-based data. We know during COVID it's been really tough to stay connected to young people, and so now more than ever, the opportunity to tell your story through data is critical. The nominees for Outstanding Use of Data and Evaluation are the Business Exchange Network, Reach Out Australia COVID-19 Research and Service Response, Community Activities Lake Macquarie Biannual Youth Development Survey, and Care South Champions. The winner is a project aimed to improve mental health and wellbeing for young people through the COVID-19 pandemic. By using a co-design approach, they included young people's voices through all stages of the project from design, implementation and evaluation. The outcome was 11 online resources available for all young people across the state. The winner is Reach Out Australia COVID-19 Research and Service Response. Congratulations. On behalf of Reach Out, we really want to say a massive thank you. Um, very, very proud to have won this award. It's really amazing to have Reach Out's research, evaluation, our service delivery, our reach and our impact recognised when we've been supporting young people's mental health and wellbeing through coronavirus. Um, this project that we ran really highlights how digital mental health can rapidly reach lots of young people um, during times like these. Um, and really the importance of this support being underpinned by research that, that really aims to understand young people's needs and their wants from, from mental health and wellbeing support through these times of crisis. Um, and we really needed to ensure that the communications um, and the content that we delivered um, was tailored appropriately to young people's needs um, in ways that were meaningful and um, relevant. So I guess for every, as for everyone this year, um, it's been really unusual. Um, so even more proud that our teams at Reach Out were able to come together remotely to take a rapid, um, a collaborative and a really flexible approach to this project. A huge thank you to all the young people who gave their time to participate in our research and all the young people involved in the development of our content and to those who gave feedback on it. We'd also like to thank the Department of Health and other funders who uh, generously funded the projects and allowed us to pivot tied funds uh, to understand and respond to the emerging needs of young people. And of course, everyone at Reach Out who took on this challenge and continue to do so, it's very much been a cross-organisational effort whilst you know, managing the ups and downs of the pandemic themselves. Hi, my name's Shane Brown, how are you? Um, I'm a recipient of uh, a previous Youth Action Award and um, thanks for asking me to introduce the Partnership Awards. I know from experience that partnering in youth work can be challenging and rewarding. Some of the best partnerships occur when like-minded youth services get together to deliver ex dynamic, exciting programs of work. Making a partnership work is about having a shared vision and goal it may not be about working in the same way, but about appreciating the different skills and knowledge each party brings to the table. When I was the CEO of Weave, we worked closely with the clinical nurse consultant from Sydney Local Health, who was a youth mental health specialist. Anne Sullivan based herself at the youth service for almost three years, and then in that time was able to share her knowledge as a mental health nurse. In turn, the service shared its youth work approach when working with young people with AID and mental health issues. Subsequently, we were able to get federal funding to run the Speak Out Dual Diagnosis Program that continues today. Good partnerships are time consuming to get started. They require flexibility, an open mind and willingness to try something new. It's also about getting to know your partner organisation, 
respecting their work and being able to argue a point of difference than moving on with a shared understanding of the work at hand. I commend the organisations that partner with others to, benefit, to the benefit of young people and the community, and especially this year's nominees and winner. This year we have a number of outstanding nominations. As well as a winner, we have a service who has been highly recommended for their partnership. I'd like to congratulate Parkside Multi-Service Youth Centre on the Central Coast. This partnership provided employment and education opportunities as well as holistic support to the young people who participate in the program. Congratulations to Parkside Multi-Service Services Youth Centre for receiving the highly commended award. I'd now like to introduce Anthony Shannon from the Department of Communities and Justice, who are event partners for this year's award. Hello, my name is Anthony Shannon, Director Early Intervention, Volunteering and Youth with New South Wales Department of Communities and Justice. I'm excited to support this year's New South Wales Youth Work Awards and present this award which recognises at least two organisations that have demonstrated an innovative approach to partnerships and have outstanding outcomes for young people as a result of the partnership. The nominees for the outstanding partnership are Parkside Multi-Service Youth Centre, Evolve Housing for Youth and Milk Crate Theatre, Step Up High School Transitions, Northern Beaches Council and Harris Farm Markets and Community Co-op Wellbeing Program, after Dark Glebe Youth Service, Lillian Howell Project and Good Shepherd Counselling Partnership, Girls in Business and Cardiff Collaborative Community Project. This partnership combines the skills, experience and resources between the services to better, better support some of the most vulnerable young people in Sydney. The approach is one that provides a safe and secure setting, builds the capacity of the young women through modelling reliable and consistent behaviours. This environment allows the young women's trust and assuredness to develop so that they are able to achieve their goals by completing their education, gaining employment and progressing to independent living. And the winner is Lillian Howe Project and Good Shepherd Counselling Partnership. I am Jasmine Scott, Adolescent and Family and Sexual Assault Counsellor at Good Shepherd Australia and New Zealand. I'm humbled to accept this award on behalf of Good Shepherd. Uh, I think this award highlights the powerful work that can be done uh, when two organisations form a partnership uh, with the purpose of providing a um, more holistic and trauma-informed service to the wonderful young people in our community. I'd like to thank uh, my supervisors, Lauren, Kate and Viv for forming this uh, productive partnership um, and for their unwavering support, especially when that support is needed after hours. Um, also to the friendly and extremely talented staff at Lillian's, thank you for welcoming me into your service each week and for working collaboratively to ensure our young people feel supported and cared for. And lastly, to the truly amazing young uh, women who turn up to counselling each and every week, and ready to engage in the process. I think you are all incredible, brave and inspiring and I want to thank you for allowing me to be a part of your journey. Hi, I'm Vivian Stavis from the Lillian Howe Project. I want to say thank you so much to Youth Action for this extraordinary award for um, Outstanding Partnership and it truly has been an outstanding partnership. Um, the idea came about in mid-2018 uh, to approach Good Shepherd uh, through supervision. Uh, we felt like we needed to provide a more holistic um, approach to counselling. We were referring girls out a lot to Good Shepherd and to other services for counselling, but we felt that it would be more beneficial to provide counselling on site. Um, and so I approached Kate and Lauren and um, they were really open to working with our organisation um, to provide counselling on site to the girls. Um, over the lifetime of the partnership, we provided a service to 12 young women um, and the outcomes have been extraordinary where we've had um, increased school engagement, um, better mental health, um, 
for the staff to be able to have the support of um, Good Shepherd um, when a young person is having, you know, mental health issues or concerns, to know that we can, you know, call Jasmine or Lauren or Kate and say, hey, this is what's going on, what do we do, makes us feel much more supported um, as workers and as an organisation. Um, so thank you so, so much to Wood Shepherd, to Lauren and Kate for being open to the idea of working together and being able to provide this amazing um, counselling service to the girls on site. Uh, to Jasmine for rocking up every week and being present and consistent and reliable for our girls. It's made a world of difference for them. Um, to Mark Dory from DCJ for the nomination. Thank you, Mark. Uh, to my extraordinary staff uh, and to, again, to Youth Action for um, hosting these awards and for uh, giving uh, our organisation the recognition um, for doing the work that we do. It feels really great to be um, recognised for that. So thank you. And lastly, to the amazing, inspiring young women that we work with, um, to see you flourish and thrive and walk with your trauma behind you is the best part of this job. And to know that we're contributing to your wellbeing is a really great feeling. So thank you. Hi, my name's Adam Gibson. I'm the State Manager for White Lion in New South Wales. We learnt work on the lands of the Darug and Darawal people. Today we're recognising excellence in youth participation. Youth participation is extremely important to the new sector in New South Wales, the new sector in general across the world. Youth engagement and participation drives better outcomes for young people. Some of these outcomes are better solutions for young people through co-design. Evidence demonstrates that participation ensures decisions are, are responsive to decisions organisations made are responsive to young people's needs. Better health and wellbeing outcomes. Individually, children and young people being involved in the decision-making process profoundly affects their lives, safety and wellbeing, while addressing dramatic power imbalances between young people and adults. Youth participation can also help drive organisational, organisational change for the youth sector. When it, when a young person puts their point of view forward, it challenges the norm, creating better outcomes for them and really helps young people move forward in their life, is what, which is in real sense what we're here to do as a part of the youth sector. I'd like to hand over now to the Advocate for Children and Young People to announce this year's winner for Outstanding Youth Participation, Zoe Robinson. Zoe Robinson and I'm the advocate for children and young people in New South Wales. We are delighted to support this award which recognises a service or project which meaningfully engages young people in service design and delivery, demonstrates innovation in engaging young people in organisational leadership and has achieved outstanding outcomes for those young people involved with it. The nominees for outstanding youth participation are Community First Step Youth Drop-In at Fairfield and Community Youth Centre. To Connect, Rethink Domestic and Family Violence Prevention. Woolandilly Youth Advisory Committee. Glebe Youth Service Aboriginal Youth Advisory Council. 180 Avalon. What You Don't See, Youth Week 2020 Project. Human Nature Adventure Therapy Elevate Program. Cumberland Council Youth Week 2020. North Sydney Local Health District Youth Health Promotion, Youth HQ, Youth Solutions, Why New South Wales Online Leadership, Central Youth Services Werry Beach Mural Project, Northern Beaches Council Youth Services Team, Camden Youth Council, Headspace Nowra Youth Reference Group, Days Drug and Alcohol Youth Support Service. There were a number of outstanding projects this year. For this reason, we have two programs that deserve a special mention and are highly commended this year. I would like to congratulate What You Don't See Youth Week 2020 Project and Human Nature Adventure Therapy Elevate Program for their outstanding work with young people. This year's winner empowers young people to take control and be agents of change in a youth action project. 
It features a youth-led approach to prevention of domestic and family violence and is led by young people throughout the process, specifically those from culturally and linguistically diverse backgrounds. These young people have been taking action to address the lack of knowledge and understanding around domestic and family violence and promoting health and respectful relationships. The winner is To Connect, Rethink Domestic and Family Violence Program. Thank you so much to Youth Action and the Advocate for Children and Young People. We are so grateful and proud to receive this award. We are really proud of all of our youth participation work in many areas such as mental health, drug use, disability access and anti-racism. The Rethink Project is the first of its kind and we are so appreciative to all of our wonderful youth peer educators and staff. They have created change around domestic and family violence, respectful relationships and gender inequality. As project coordinator, I'd like to say a huge thank you to all of our amazing peer eds for their passion and commitment in leading this project and ensuring its success. We're so excited to win this award. The Rethink Project has empowered us as young people to take control and be agents of change in the prevention of family and domestic violence. The Rethink Project targets young people aged 12 to 18 years, specifically those from cultural and linguistic diverse backgrounds. The project aims to increase knowledge and understanding of the nature and causes of domestic and family violence. This has been achieved by facilitating workshops in schools, outreach activities and social marketing. Over 1,500 young people participated in education strategies so far. Thank you to 2Connect as a whole for empowering us and our mentor and coordinator Nicole Scobie for her inspiration. This project would not be possible in addressing such an important issue affecting young people today without the funding from Women New South Wales. So a huge thank you to them. Hi, my name is Hannah Lai and I work at the Multicultural Youth Affairs Network, also known as Mayan. What does it mean to work with young people who are from a diverse background or experience? As youth workers, I think it means that we meet young people where they are. We acknowledge that they're intersectional and that they have layers and layers of experience. It might be the young person from Iraq who's just arrived, who's finishing that degree they didn't get to complete, but they're doing it in a new language, in English. It might be a young South Asian person coming to terms with their sexuality, understanding their cultural identity, and trying to be an emerging artist. It might be a young Muslim woman who loves footy, family, and public speaking. It might be a young person who's acquired a disability, and at the same time trying to come to terms with a new mental health diagnosis. Whatever it is, we meet them where they are. We let young people know that they are enough, and it doesn't matter what experiences they have. My name's Hannah, and I am really honored to announce the next speaker, Mohita Kapoor from the Create Foundation. Thank you. Hi everybody, my name is Moita Kapoor. I am the New South Wales State Coordinator for Crate Foundation. Crate is a national consumer body for the voices of children and young people with a care experience. Today, I am pleased to present a award that recognizes a service order project, um, which works primarily with young people with diverse backgrounds and experiences, and which has achieved outstanding outcomes for young people involved in it. The nominees for this award are She's Like the Wing, Unique Experiences, Life Without Barriers Youth Advocacy Program, Beneath Our Skin, Blacktown Youth Service Association, Cold Academy, Refugee Youth Learn to Swim Program, Multicultural Communities, Social Football, Macquarie Undergraduate Research Internship Program, Glam LGBTQA Plus Youth Support Program, Core Community Services, Darts Multicultural Youth Group Newcastle, Little Dreamers Australia, Focus Connect. So here's a little bit about our winner. So let's see if we can guess who it is. So this service is a specialist non-profit organisation for the past 30 years. They have provided cultural relevant psychological treatment, support and community interventions to help people and communities heal the scars of torture and refugee and build their lives here in Australia. 
They also foster a positive recovery environment through the provision of training services, advocacy, and policy work. So, any guesses? Yep. It is Starts Multicultural Youth Group Newcastle. Well done. This is a fabulous award to achieve. So happy. Well done once again. Congratulations. Hi, and thank you for the award. We are happy and excited and can't wait to share this award with the young people that we work with. Um, every day we learn from the young people that we work with. And so I want to thank them, them first uh, for everything that they have taught me. The youth group, uh, the Newcastle Multicultural Youth Group has been going now for four years and it was set up as a response to a community need to support young people outside of the school setting. Uh, we hire a space once a week and invite young people from refugee backgrounds and multicultural backgrounds from any school uh, here in Newcastle to join us. Uh, we created over those four years a safe, neutral and inviting space that young people can engage in formal and more often informal activities um, just so they can have fun, make friends and um, build those connections that are so important upon settlement. And uh, one of the key uh, settlement uh, outcomes of the youth group has been those longer lasting um, stable friendships that continue on way past uh, the youth group when people finish there. Um, the uh, communities that of, of young people that come to the youth group uh, include countries such as uh, Syria, the Democratic Republic of Congo, uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, Burundi, Kurdistan, Mauritania, um, China, Jordan, that's just to name a few. Um, so the, youth, the Multicultural Youth Group in Newcastle is led by STARTS, which is the Service for the Treatment and Rehabilitation of Torture and Trauma Survivors. And it's the key to its sustainability and success over the four years is these long-term stable partnerships, consistent partnerships, um, that have uh, shown with the relationships that we have with the young people. So all that really special incidental counselling can happen at the youth group and it's a great way for us to support them and also their families. So those key partners, um, I just want to say a big thank you to them um, because without them it would not be possible. So those partners include Northern Settlement Services, the Multicultural Neighbourhood Centre in Lambton, the North Lakes Youth Service, Catholic Care, the Multicultural Police Liaison, that's the MACLO here in Newcastle, Headspace and the volunteers and students over that time. So thank you again and uh, really can't wait to share this award with the young people that we work with. Okay, bye. Hello, I'm Daniel Daylight. I'm the Program Manager of Weave's Creative Futures program down in Waterloo. I'm a proud Gamilaroi man. Uh, first, I'd like to thank Ani Ann Weldon for her welcome here today and acknowledge that I'm on unceded sovereign country of the Gadigal people of the Eora Nation and pay my respect to Elders past, present and emerging. Um, so I'm introducing the award for outstanding work with young Aboriginal people or Aboriginal young people. Um, I've spent my whole working life working in this field and I feel um, I've been very fortunate to see that when you put love and hard work into our young people that they are able to um, flourish and become the emerging leaders that I've just talked about. I'm incredibly fortunate to work with some young people who are nominated for awards later on in this um, telecast or whatever you call it. Um, and some young people who've just been nominated for awards beforehand. Um, those young people have benefited from amazing youth work and from youth work that has helped to fill in some of the support structures that have been removed from our people. Um, our young people, our young Aboriginal people are still the most disenfranchised 
and disadvantage young people in this country and so we need all the support that we can get. Um, we want you to hear us and you we want you to walk alongside us but we need you to also help us support our young people so that they can become the um, men and women um, that we want them to be. Um, so with that I'd like to um, introduce Greg Andrews and Brian Edwards from APSEC um, to present this award. Hi, Billy Mob, Brian Edwards here, Project Support Officer at APSEC. Hi, Greg Andrews, Practice Support Officer here at APSEC. APSEC is the New South Wales Aboriginal Child and Family Peak Organisation working to provide child protection and out of home care policy advice on issues affecting Aboriginal children, young people, families and carers. We are pleased to support and present this award which recognises a service or project that works primarily with Aboriginal young people and has achieved outcomes for the young people involved in it. The nominees for the Outstanding Work with Aboriginal Young People Award are Bunnell Aboriginal Youth Project, Winds Community Centre and Our Space. The program has been a cultural journey for local Central Coast Indigenous young people. They have been guided by local artists and elders connecting them with rich local Indigenous culture and sacred sites while producing wonderful creative works. The winner of the award is Bunnell Aboriginal Youth Project. Congratulations to the Bunnell Aboriginal Youth Project. If you'd like to know more about this project, please visit their website. Hi, I'm Karen. I'm the Indigenous Justice Caseworker with Regional Youth Support Services. Hi, my name is Mitchell Mark. I'm, I'm the Cultural Linking Worker for Regional Youth Support Service. And I'm Gail Cosentino, the team leader for our Facebook team. Um, thank you very much. We are so proud to receive this award on behalf of RIS. Um, the Bunnell Project was an amazing opportunity for our young Indigenous local young people on the Central Coast. Um, it was enabled them to make friendships, um, encourage great artwork and support the Indigenous culture. Um, Bunnell represents how RIS works in partnership to showcase the Indigenous art. So we're also very grateful for the support of Barry Duncan, Sharon Aldrich who assisted on this project and also to the young people on the Central Coast who participated in Bunnell. Um, we'd also like to thank Gosford Hospital and Wyong Hospital, Wyong Art House, for displaying the art. And we'd also like to thank the support of GNL, who will be displaying the art next year. Um, so thank you, Youth Action. Thank you very much for the award, and we really appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, my name's Lakin Agnew and I chair the Regional Youth Development Opportunities Network, Right On. This award for outstanding work with regional young people is particularly important to me because it's a great opportunity to recognise the awesome work that happens with regional, remote and rural young people and the services and projects that are smashing out some great outcomes. There are some real disparities between urban and rural areas, with rural young people facing distinct challenges relating to education, training and employment opportunities, as well as access to basic services. Quite often the starting point for many programs is to think outside of the box to overcome the disadvantage caused by distance. But we know how amazing regional services are at cooperation, collaboration and partnerships, and how to just make stuff happen. Regional communities are renowned for being inclusive, nurturing and supportive environments for young people and this award really highlights the great work happening in these spaces. Congratulations to all the nominees. Now it's over to the supporter of this award, Nick Minto from Training Services New South Wales. Hi everyone. It's Nick Minto here from Training Services New South Wales. It's great to join you again this year. Training Services New South Wales is responsible for government funded vocational education and training in New South Wales. This includes apprenticeships and traineeships. This year has been a particularly difficult year for young people and I want to acknowledge all of the great work that your organisations have done to support our communities. I'm delighted to support this award for outstanding work with regional young people which recognises programs and services who have achieved outstanding outcomes for young people in regional areas. The nominees for outstanding work with regional young people are 
BT Works, Uniting's Premier's Youth Initiative, Out of the Box Programs, Eurobadella Shire Council Youth Recovery Forums, Sonder Youth Changemakers Program, Highlands Youth Services, and Our Space. Congratulations to the nominees. This program was established to meet a demonstrated community need for flexible, supported training and employment opportunities that could specifically cater to the early school leaver cohort. As a social enterprise, they offer commercial services in agriculture, construction and fabrication to customers in the New England region and beyond. So the winner of Outstanding Work with Regional Young People is BT Works. Congratulations. We're really excited to receive this award for Outstanding Work with Regional Youth. And I'd just like to take a couple of moments to thank our supporters and the funders that have been with us right from the start at BT Works. And also, I'd just like to add a big shout out to the staff at BT Works that are putting in every single day working with the young people that we support. And tonight, to the boys that are out camping, working on bushfire recovery work. We really love the work you're doing out there and I know the community appreciates you. Thanks again for this award. My name is Melody Gardner. I'm a long time volunteer in the youth sector and with Youth Action and a previous winner of Youth Sector Volunteer of the Year. Youth work is built on the belief that young people are active participants in their lives and in their communities. Volunteers are an essential part of our work. From the young person at drop-in, helping out at the cafe, to youth advisory committees and event organisers, older community members with skills to share and a spare ear, stepping up and helping out. Today's young volunteers are often tomorrow's youth workers, teachers, community leaders. The unpaid work volunteers do, the passion and commitment with which they do it, can be the difference between a project working and a project failing. Volunteers share with youth workers a belief in a better world for young people. Believe young people are powerful, can make change happen. Volunteers collaborate, mobilise and transform. Volunteers share hope and our sector is all the better for it. I now call on Gemma Rygate, CEO of the Centre for Volunteering, to present the award for New South Wales Youth Sector Volunteer of the Year. Hi everyone, my name is Gemma Rygate. I'm the CEO of the Centre for Volunteering, the peak body for volunteering in New South Wales, looking out for volunteers and volunteer involving organisations. It's our pleasure to support and to present this award, which goes to an individual volunteer who has worked with young people and has achieved extraordinary outcomes in their volunteering work with young people. The nominees for the New South Wales Youth Sector Volunteer of the Year are Jasmine Phillips, Jahir Tanvir, Brittany Cronin, Rory Keyes, Kimberly Lee, Jennifer Sanders, Brendan Brest, Ariba Omar, Faber Framin, Leanne Baker, and Layla May Bevan McGuinness. Congratulations to all of the nominees. The person who wins this award is an impressive young man who has used his life experience to inspire and to advocate for other young people. Through participation in the Y Foundation's Youth Homelessness Representative Council, he has positively influenced New South Wales pol policy makers and has also encouraged other young people to find their voice. 
the winner of the New South Wales Youth Sector Volunteer of the Year Award is Brendan Breast. Congratulations, Brendan. Hi, my name is Brendan. Um, I just want to thank you, everybody, who put a nomination in for me for this year's New South Wales Youth Sector Award Volunteer of the Year. Um, when I found out, it was honestly the best feeling. I, my levels went from up here to every further. Um, definitely a bit up there, but everybody who put a nom big nomination in for me, thank you guys. Absolutely love this. Um, I hope to expel more skills and, and try and increase our youth. But yeah, I can't thank you, everybody who nominated me. And it's a big up with thank you, everybody. And I'm so privileged to win this award. Uh, hello everybody, kia ora koutou, my name's Pete Slattery and I get to say something about the New South Wales Youth Service of the Year Award and to say something about why we need youth services, why do they matter. Youth services are a place where young people can go, where they can be safe and where they can be courageous and vulnerable, where they can have fun, where they can be creative and they can do all this in the presence of good adults who can guide and support them and who at important times for young people can be the go-to people when life becomes tough and difficult as it will for everyone. So youth services are places where there's connection with place and with people and with purpose. I get to say something about the highly commended award and as uh, myself who's been described as a chronic youth worker, I'm really delighted to say that this award goes to the Blacktown Youth Service Association. Um, Blacktown, western part of Sydney, a wonderful demographic and a fantastic place to go if you want a good feed. So congratulations, BISA. I'm delighted to be here. And the last thing I need to do is to introduce Councillor Linda Scott, who's the President of Local Government New South Wales. Hello, I'm Linda Scott, a councillor at the City of Sydney Council and the president of Local Government New South Wales, the peak body for all our state's councils. I'm coming to you today from Gadigal land and I'd like to pay my respects to our elders past, present and emerging right across this beautiful state of New South Wales. We're so proud to be here to present this award tonight and more generally, to work with all our fantastic youth workers, youth action, and so many great local government services across the state. 2020 has thrown all it possibly could at us. And I wanna pay particular tribute to the youth workers across the state who have more than supported our young people in the difficult year that they have faced. So without further ado, I'm honoured to present this award which recognises a youth service that has shown innovation in the programs they offer, modelled the ethics and values as best practice youth work, and has achieved excellent outcomes for the young people engaging with it. The nominees for the New South Wales Youth Service of the Year are Blacktown Youth Services Association, Mirai Birai Youth Service, The Glebe Youth Service, 2010, Down the Track, Leader Life, Good Shepherd, the Marrickville Youth Resource Centre, the Northern Beaches Council Youth Development Team, Productivity Boot Camp, and the North Lakes Youth Centre. Congratulations to all the very deserving nominees for the work that you have all done. The winner of this program is an innovative youth service program based in the remote town of Lake Cargelico in the New South Wales Central West with over 90% of the young people who they work with identifying as Indigenous. This program was established to holistically address the complex challenges facing young people, offering practical education, training and employment opportunities in vocational, soft skills and life skills that align with the local job market. So a big congratulations to the winner, Down the Track. Congratulations again to all the nominees and to Down the Track. You've done a magnificent job, especially in 2020, and we can't wait to see what you do into the future. Thanks so much. 
G'day everyone, kind ones from out west. What an honour it is to be talking to you right now. We definitely don't set out to win awards, so to be acknowledged at this level means being in a small remote community doesn't mean our work goes unrecognised. We're extremely proud and absolutely humbled to win the award. Sending big thanks to our mates at Backtrack for nominating us, the amazing young people of our community, and of course, the amazing down the track team who work tirelessly for change. Our work is far from over, but as we say here at Down the Track, we've, we've got, got these. these. Hi everyone, I hope you are all having an amazing Youth Work Awards 2020. I know it's a bit different this year as everyone's been saying, um, but I'm sure I know many of you out there and hi to everyone that I know. For those of you who I don't know, my name is Chrissy. I'm Western Sydney Project Coordinator here at Youth Action. So today I'm going to be talking about emerging youth workers. This award is very special to me because not that long ago I was an emerging youth worker myself. Trying to get that first gig after you finished studying, um, you know, just you want that casual role or you want a part-time role and work your way up and you know it's it's hard out there so I just want to you know put my hands together for all the amazing emerging youth workers nominated today Keep in touch with your colleagues, your fellow youth workers and your, you know, your coordinators because they're going to get you through this journey and support you all along the way. So people who are nominated today um, have shown dedication, innovation, they have achieved outcomes and they definitely model best practice whilst placing young people's rights at the very centre of their work. Youth workers nominated for this award value the young people that they're working with as experts in their own lives. Knowing they have the capacity to identify their own solutions whilst maintaining a professional relationship and advocating to address systemic barriers. Thank you so much to Aqua to sponsoring this award today. I'd like to invite Steve, CEO of Aqua, to present. Chief Executive of Aqua, I'm pleased to support and present this award, which honours an emerging youth worker. The person receiving this award has worked in the sector for three years or less, has shown extraordinary dedication and innovation with their work, and has demonstrated outstanding outcomes with the young people with whom they work. They also model the values of best practice youth work by valuing young people as the experts in their own lives and that they have the capacity to identify their own solutions. The nominees for the New South Wales Emerging Youth Work of the Year are Isaiah Sines, Syrah Muhammad, Alison Jones, Shani Stewart, Ian Hall Green, Caitlin Muddyman, Tuli uh, Vulatha, and Lily Giles. I'm about to now announce the winner. This young man is a proud Dungati man from Kempsey with ties to the Wiradjuri people. He's caring, a true leader, strong advocate, determined and has the deep respect of the young people he works with, as well as his community and colleagues. Please join me in congratulating Isaiah Sands. Hi, thanks for the award and um, I've yeah, I'd like to thank Just Reinvestment, um, Daniel Daylight and Jess Brown for all the support and help you give me. And um, yeah, a bit while I want to well, become a youth worker to make change in Western Sydney, particularly Mount Jewel. Yeah. Hi everyone. Um, I'm Howard Sirkham. It's a great pleasure to be part of these awards today to celebrate the great work that youth workers are doing across the state of New South Wales. Um, the work they're doing to help young people overcome the barriers that they face, 
um, to find a life that feels like it belongs to them and where they can live well. Um, there's an art, isn't there, in youth work, in the process of bringing together um, the experience of, of the sector and of working the wisdom of that, um, bringing together the insights from empathy, bringing together um, the capacity to apply the knowledge and, um, ex and uh, evidence that we come across in other kinds of fields to the work that we do with young people. Um, to, uh, and really all of us know people like that, people, youth workers in our field, who are great at bringing together those things. Um, some of those have nominated for this award, um, and this award celebrates not, uh, good youth work, good youth work where, wherever it happens across the state, both with these people who have nominated um, and others who have not. Uh, the award does recognise, however, one particular person, someone who we feel represents the best of youth work, um, as we understand it, represents the best of this capacity to work with young people, to give them the kind of life that we believe that they deserve. Um, this year we have had a number of excellent nominations and as well as a winner, we would also like to acknowledge that Luke Wallace has been highly commended for this year's award. Um, Luke's currently employed by the Goulburn Mawari Council and established the Paperback Cafe. Uh, congratulations to Luke on uh, receiving that outstanding nominate, highly commended award. I'd like to now introduce Tanil, Tanil Alibazatos Kuri uh, from Victoria University. Hi, my name is Tanil Kuri and I'm from Victoria University. We've been delivering youth work education for over 20 years. We run a Bachelor of Youth Work upgrade for people that work as youth workers in the industry and would like to go back to do further study. Recently, we've had a number of New South Wales students study in the course. I'm pleased to present this award, which recognises a youth worker who has shown extraordinary dedication to their work, who models the ethics and values of best practice youth work, and who has supported outstanding outcomes in the lives of young people they work with. The nominees for New South Wales Youth Worker of the Year 2020 are Luke Wallace, Habil Mawadi, Katrina Housier, Linda Dalton, Jodie Dickerson, Wade Harris, Mackenzie Edgington, Tegan Kenny, Roxana Vella, Glenn Crump, Maddie Forward, Stacey Jacobs, and Jeanette Tinjack. Over this individual's career, she has completed an extraordinary amount of training and professional development to ensure that she's able to continue to provide a high quality of evidence-informed programs and services for young people in her local community of Orange. I would like to congratulate the winner, Katrina Housier. Congratulations, Katrina, and congratulations on being very close to graduating from the Bachelor of Youth Work. I would just like to say thank you to everyone who has helped me get to this position today. I feel really weird standing here talking like this. However, I have to thank Julie, my wonderful boss who nominated me for this award, who I had no idea that I was getting. Thank you to all my work colleagues. I feel a little bit like I need to thank everyone. Like this award is for everyone, not just me. Can't do it without my youth worker services, without my amazing bosses who allow me to do kind of whatever I want. And my partner in crime, Jason French, but even more so my young people, the hundreds of young people that I work with. Hi, I hope you've been enjoying the awards so far. Um, we've been watching out the back and it's been really lovely to watch all of the, the youth workers speaking from the heart about why these awards are important to them, to watch the winners. Um, thank you to the messages over the chat. It's been really beautiful to watch all of the support out there. Like I said at the beginning, 
whether you're nominated, whether you're a winner, whether you're just someone watching, you work with young people, your heart and your passion are, are directed towards young people. So this is just about celebrating that. So I want to... Um, I want to say thank you again to everyone who's been watching. I get the very, very special privilege of getting to announce the, um, or to introduce the Lifetime Achievement Awards. Um, or as I heard, uh, I heard Peter Slattery describing earlier on, I think we could rename them the Chronic Youth Worker Awards, because these are for the people who have been around a long time. They've dedicated their life to, to working with young people. I think everyone knows that to work with young people, your heart's got to be in it. It's not just a job, it never is just a job. Um, and for the people that have been nominated for this award, these, these people have been doing it forever, for years and years and years. These are the role models, the people who inspire us. These are our elders, these are the, the keepers of the sector wisdom. So I'm really, I feel very humbled to be able to, to be the person who gets to speak about the importance of this award. We decided every year there are so many really amazing people nominated and it's really difficult. How do you evaluate one person's life, uh, life achievements against someone else's? So we've decided to, to change things up a bit. Um, call it a COVID pivot, call it a you know, new CEO, let's mix things up. We've decided to, as we've decided to change this year to having a lifetime uh, hall of fame. So we would like to induct all of our inaugural uh, nominees for this award into our Lifetime Hall of Fame. We're going to give one very last special award and uh, when you see that you'll understand uh, what this award is about. Um, so I won't give it away yet. But what I would like to do is I would like to introduce uh, Joanna Quilty, who's the CEO of NCOS, and she's going to speak a bit about each of the nominees and also to name a very last award winner. Um, but moving forward, we're going to have a Hall of Fame to celebrate all of all of those people who have spent, who are chronic, who are chronic lifetime youth workers. Um, so yeah, I'm going to hand over to Joanna now. We'll be profiling these people throughout the year. So it's going to give us a bit of an opportunity to, again, build that bank of faces and experiences and really represent the true diversity and longevity that we have in the sector. So I'm going to hand over now to Joanna Quilty. Thank you. Hi everyone, my name is Joanna Quilty and I'm the CEO of the New South Wales Council of Social Service. As you probably know, we're the peak body for the community sector in New South Wales and we advocate for a New South Wales free from poverty and disadvantage. This year, in addition to awarding the Lifetime Achievement Prize, it's been decided to celebrate everyone nominated for the Lifetime Achievement Award by inducting them into the newly established New South Wales Youth Work Hall of Fame. All of these individuals have demonstrated a long-term commitment to their profession and to the young people that they work with every day. They've each gone above and beyond, ensuring that young people are placed at the centre of their work. So please join me in congratulating Natalie Chiapazzo from Blacktown Youth Services Association, Samantha King from the Business Education Network, Graham Riddell from Core Community Services, Justin Burke from Northern Beaches Council, Narelle Clay from Southern Youth and Family Services, and Glenn Crump from Mire Bure. Congratulations. I did also want to make a special note of Russell King, who was also nominated this year. As many of you would know, Russell was the CEO of Waze Youth and Family Services in Bondi for over 30 years. He's responsible for the growth and achievement of Waze ensuring that it always had strong ties with the local Eastern Sydney community and that the ways programs and activities are directed towards the needs of the young people and their families in the area. He was a true visionary and innovator with an admirable sense of social justice and he has positively impacted on so many careers and shaped people's lives for the better. Very sadly and suddenly, and to the shock of the Ways community, Russell passed away at the end of last year. But his memories will continue to live on through the work which Ways does every day. So I would really like to acknowledge Russell and the commitment to young people and the New South Wales youth sector that he displayed throughout his very long career. Thank you. Hi, 
I'm Dr. Terry Said, CEO of Ways Youth and Family, and I'm truly honoured to be accepting the Lifetime Achievement Award on behalf of my late boss, Russell King, and on behalf of his family, Sally, his wife, and Kiriana, his daughter. I've had the great privilege of working alongside Russell for 16 years, and in that time, I've gone to admire, grown to admire Russell's generosity of spirit. Russell was a true visionary and innovator, and he had an admirable sense of social justice. Russell was such an incredible leader. He ensured that young people were truly listened to, were fed, were educated, and were given the tools to achieve their dreams. Russell is someone that I believe we can all look up to in the social services uh, industry. And it is my honor and my privilege to succeed him in this role and hopefully do justice to the memory of him. Thank you so much, Terry from Ways, for that beautiful tribute to Russell. I knew Russell when I started in the sector. He was a legend then and I knew him well and it's terribly sad that he's no longer with us and I know that he'll be deeply missed by the sector. So thank you and I hope everybody really enjoyed those beautiful memories. He really was a, a chronic youth worker. Um, so on that note, I want to thank everybody again for being here today. Everybody for joining us. I want to thank our event partners, Department of Communities and Justice and Training Services New South Wales. I'd like to thank all of our supporters who have supported the awards and who provided us with those wonderful videos. Um, I'd like to thank everybody in our team here at Youth Action. Um, we were worried about online and not face-to-face. -face. We, we love a face-to-face -face event, so we were a bit worried about how this was going to come together. And I'm so incredibly fortunate and lucky to have such a talented team of staff who've been able to pull this together. Um, I'd like to wish all of you out there the very best for what's left of 2020. Uh, 2021 is going to be a million times better. I'm looking forward to us having more opportunities to see you in person, more opportunities to connect with you online. Thank you again for, for being with us, for, for nominating the people that in your communities, in your services, um, for honouring them, for for the recognition that you've given them. Um, so all the very best for the rest of 2020 and looking forward to, to catching up with you all on whatever is left in this journey that we have in this sector. We'll see you soon. All the best. Thank you.